Hello! So today you meet me on the ground at Newcastle Airport with the DA62 in Microsoft Flight Simulator and we're going to be taking a look at programming instrument flight plans into the G1000 today. So I picked this aircraft because it comes with the simulator and it has the Garmin G1000 in it. So if we go and jump inside out of the, the noise outside, you can see it has got the stock G1000s and obviously these are common to lots of the aeroplanes in the simulator. So let's go and have a look at the flight plan we are proposing. We are going to take off from Newcastle. We're going to fly a standard instrument departure and then we're going to head south. And the important part of this today is we're going to be following airways. So if I zoom in slightly, you can see these are airways that we're following along the map. And then we'll eventually get to a standard terminal arrival route or star that takes us out towards the approach for London City. So literally this this route is probably never ever been flown in the real world and i'm not going to fly it today i've just picked out some elements of a route that give a good example of different pieces of a route that you might program into an airplane okay okay so if we look at the route as text we've got departure from echo golf november tango which is newcastle runway 25 we're then doing the girl 3x standard instrument departure which takes us to the girly waypoint then we take the P-18 airway to the Pole Hill or Pole VOR and then airway M605 to the Silver Waypoint which is the beginning of the Silv 1C standard terminal arrival route into London City and then we'll obviously use the ILS-47. So in between there, there will be vectors I imagine in the um, in the Garmin, so it'll be interesting to see how it represents the join between there. Anyway, let's go and see how we get this started and set up then. So we're in the aeroplane in the DA62. I'm going to at least start the engines so the batteries don't go flat while we're playing around with the Garmins. Okay, so first things first, let's go and move the fuel control levers forwards. Then we'll go and turn the electrical master switch on. We'll turn the master on for the right engine. Uh, oh, we can do the um, the AV master actually because otherwise we've got no data on the engines. So it's just booting up the GPS. It will come up with a loca location soon, and so we'll start the right engine, and then turn the master on for the left engine and turn it over. Is it going to start? Just. Okay. So then we can turn on the alternators for the engines. And we'll leave them ticking over. Literally, we've just turned the engines on so we have power, basically. So we can wait for the systems to boot up and to start. It's all good. It's warning, obviously, the pitot heat is off. We can ignore that because we're not actually going to go anywhere. We're just going to sit here on the ground with the engine running. There we go. So the um, inertial components have now aligned and it's showing us which way up we are which is always helpful. <laughs> okay, so let's go and press F, go sideways, because we are going to be looking primarily at this screen today and nothing else. So let's go over to the, the volume and turn this down a bit, because we don't really want to hear the engine rumbling away in the background while we're talking. It'd be quite useful not to have it. Okay, so we're looking at the map. We can see ourselves at Newcastle. So this is the, the G1000 navigation display. To program our flight plan in, we're going to press the FPL button. And that brings up the active flight plan on the right hand side of the screen. So to put the cursor in here to start programming a flight plan, we push in the middle of the FMS knob. And that puts a cursor into the active flight plan window. And we can then use the outer knob on the FMS to move the cursor up and down. So if I roll the mouse wheel on it, we can go up and down. And we can use the inner knob to set something. So we want to set our origin, which is the line below origin. So if we roll the inner knob, it will pop up a second dialog over the top to set a location. Now, we can either use the, the, the real way this works in the real world is to roll the inner knob again and you can go through the letters of the alphabet. So we could do, I'll just do this the once and then I'll show you the trick. So E-G-N-T, so E, 
So the inner knob does the letters, the, le the outer knob does the character position. So we can go right one, and we can go to G, so we can roll the, right, the inner knob again. So go to E, G, roll the outer knob to the next character, and go to N, and then roll the outer knob for the next character, and we want T. Now I think if we go slowly, you should see that it misses letters now and again. Because it will only show letters that have actually got a, a an answer on them. So EGNT is where we're leaving from anyway. So there was an easier way of doing this, having done that. You can just click on the little icon here. It's supposed to be an icon of a keyboard. If you click on that, you can use the keyboard. So I can type in EGNT. And then press the Enter key. Now it's asking for the runway. If we roll the inner knob, it will drop down the runway options at Newcastle. So if we go and refer to our text description of the route, we want to leave on runway 25. So we'll select runway 25. And to do that, you roll the outer knob to select and then press enter. And then press enter again to accept our choices. So it now says we are leaving Newcastle on runway 25. To say where we are going, which is going to be Echo Golf Lima Charlie, that's London City, Romy 27, we need to go and do the same again. So we've got the cursor over the destination and we roll the inner knob to set the destination. So we can click on the keyboard icon and type in Echo Golf Lima Charlie. And it comes up with London City. Then we press enter. And then asking for the runway, we roll the inner knob on the FMS knob and we can choose Romy 27 and press enter and then enter again. So we've now got where we're going from and where we're going to, but we haven't got en route. So you'll notice it's actually gone up there automatically. So we can go down to the en route part of this and we can have a look. So the en route isn't going to do a great deal for us, is it? Because we want to go and program the standard instrument departure and the standard terminal arrival route that we're going to be flying. But let's have a look first, shall we, at what we can do about putting the airways in in the middle of the route. So we actually want to go to Gurley, then P18, Pole, M605, Silver. Yeah, so that's the bit we actually want to program into the en route. The rest we can do afterwards, and I'll show you how. So Gurley, so while you are looking at the, um, the route, press the menu key, and you'll see that you can load an airway. Okay, but we don't want to do that just yet. We want to at least put the first waypoint in of the airway first. So we go for Gurley first. Okay, so to, to put an entry in here, the same as we did with the runways, we roll the inner knob and it will ask you about the waypoints. So we can press the keyboard icon and type in G-I-R-L-I -I, and it should find the appropriate one. It's in the United Kingdom, press enter to accept. So here's the important bit about airways. You have to be in the row below the waypoint to choose the airway that leaves that waypoint. Okay, so if you look on the map and go and look at that girly waypoint, we want to be on this P18 airway, but it leaves from girly or girly is on the airway. That's the important point. So we need to be in the field or the row below the waypoint. So then when you press menu, and load airway, it will know that you're talking about airways that cross through Gurley. So then press enter on load airway. So now look, entry, entry onto the airway is at Gurley. What airway do we want? So we roll the inner knob and we want P18. Remember, if we look at the map, we can see P18. Notice the nice thing about little nav map, which is this navigation software, is it also shows you the altitude restrictions. So that's from 8,000 up to 24,000 feet. So we need to get to Gurley on the standard instrument departure. We, we need to get to 8,000 feet to join the airway. Okay, so P18 and press enter. And then it's asking what, at what point are we going to leave P8, uh, sorry, the um, airway P18. We're going to leave it when it crosses through Pole or Pole Hill. So let's have a look at that on the map. 
so we're on p18 all the way down here and there's the pole waypoint and you can see the one we're leaving on is a different airway so we come back into the airplane our exit point roll the inner knob use the left or the outer knob sorry to um to scroll down so what you're seeing here is a list of all of the waypoints on the airway and you will see Gurley will be listed and it's greyed out and then below it are the subsequent waypoints if we keep going we don't actually get what we're looking for uh, let's have another look p18 should end at pole and it's not or did i just miss it in the list oh has it got an actual waypoint here let's have a look closely no it hasn't i'm being thrown completely now aren't i was it there and i just didn't spot it oh there it was it was earlier in the list press enter so Gurley, and then it passes through tinley uvavu gasco akbat idcol and pol so if you look closely at this those are those waypoints along the airway so it's just showing you the tilney uvavu gasco Ag abcats and so on and so forth yeah it's listing them out the ones we will pass through on that airway so we can use the outer knob to scroll down until we get to load and press enter on load so it's now put all of those waypoints into our route and it knows they are part of airway p18 okay so then if we scroll down further to the line underneath here we can then do another airway so this will be interesting if we press menu and load airway again it knows that pole was the last waypoint so entering the next airway at pole we want to take airway m605 all the way down here around this corner it continues on the same airway to daventry oh no it carries on down past daventry m605 ends up at silver so we'll change the airway so the inner knob changes the airway and we want m605 enter and then we want the exit point to be silver so keep an eye out in the list for silver there it is and press enter so pole pedig daventry finma silver we'll just double check that that looks good so we'll go down and load and press enter and you can see this list is getting longer and longer so if we roll this backwards one and then forwards one it will re-put the it will scroll down to the bottom so if you ever look like you're halfway down the list but you know the focus is in here just roll backwards one and forwards one on the outer knob of the fms so after we get to silver we're done with the airways we're going to go and program in the standard terminal arrival route okay so we can press the button in and we're done with programming the basic route so we now want to do procedures so the sid and the star are procedures so we click on proc and we'll do the departure first so select departure and press enter and we want to do the girl 3x standard instrument departure so if we go and have a look at it that's the girl 3x departure so we want that one so outer knob takes us down to girl 3x and press enter and that again previews it for us we can roll down to load and press enter so we've now got leaving newcastle through a sequence of waypoints until we get to tilney and then we're off on the airways okay so by the same token we can press the knob so get rid of the focus out of here we can go to procedures again and we can select our approach and our arrival so the approach let's press enter on it we this is the approach into the runway so we're doing ILS for runway 27 okay so we'll press enter and it, again it's saying do we want vectors or do we want one of the options let's have a look at that just to show you that in little nav map as well so if we right click here and show arrival procedures for london city and you've got ils for 27 here now there are two transitions so the the ils for 27 begins at lavno but there's 
one here that goes way out into the south coast, which is no good to us, and another one that goes all the way to Jacko, which is perfect. So lav 1j. So if we insert that one, what if we wanted to do that? I mean, it's a hell of a route, isn't it? But let's try it. So we'll do the lav 1j transition, and you can see it sampling it on the map here for us, and we'll press enter on that. And then we can scroll down and there's all the way points on that enormous approach and press load and press enter and it's saying not approved for GPS <laughs> load approach yes and it's now put that into our route so if we go to procedure again we've done the approach we can now do the arrival so this is the arrival is this bit up here yeah so we want to do the silv 1c standard terminal arrival route so select arrival enter so let's see if we can find it so we scroll down silv 1c there it is and press enter and it, again it works exactly the same it previews the steps it's going to inject and we load enter and we're done okay so we have got one hell of a route in here now so if we go and roll this around oops sorry wrong button so we'll put the focus in here and we can go down through the route and all we have to do is if we go quite slowly we can zoom out on this as well so you can oh that's the wrong way i want to increase the the view so as we skip down through i think it will zoom back in but it's useful to us anyway yeah it's zooming back in to show each each waypoint and the the pertinent features around that waypoint but you can see that entire route we've programmed in that zigzags around the country so we can press that again to remove the focus and it comes back to the aeroplane and we're aircraft facing on the display as per usual and we can get rid of the flight plan button and go fly our flight so that was it really that's what i really wanted to cover today is how you can program airways remember you need to be below the entrance point so you're programming the entrance point into the airway then you move to the line below it and press the menu button and then obviously it's not lit up at the moment because it makes no sense for it to be so because i'm not on a clear line in the display but yeah hopefully that's useful to you and then obviously to do sids and stars you go to the procedure button or proc button and then you can select approaches, arrivals and departures. Hopefully that's useful. And that's all I really wanted to cover today. Obviously I'm not going to fly that route because it makes no sense for a tiny little DA-62 to go flying the entire length of Britain and to zigzag all over the place. But um, it was a good classroom exercise. So again, this piece of software is called Little NavMap. It's very, very good because you can switch on and off the low altitude and the high altitude airways. So just to give you some idea. And the reason, if you're not aware of this, the reason you have standard terminal arrival routes and, um, and standard instrument departures is for cities. So if you imagine flying over London here, you've got major airports all over the place and you've got airways at different altitudes different airways are at different altitudes if you zoom in on these in the little nav map you can see all the different altitudes they're at so this maintains a safe corridor through the airspace for your aircraft to follow so you imagine there's aircraft going in all directions all the time at different altitudes from each other though so they all avoid each other nice and neatly and tidily anyway i'm going to leave it there Hopefully you've enjoyed that. Hopefully this is useful to you to be able to program routes into the G1000 using airways and procedures for IFR purposes. I'll see you again soon.